Yeah. All right. Glory to the King. <clears throat> right, Y'all, we do thank you for all things. Do humble ask and request in the magnificent name of Jesus. Uh, grant us the ears to hear. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Everybody all right? I guess if you're alive, you're all right, ain't you? Huh? You're, hey, cut this mic on right here. We're going to have Ashley. We're gonna, this is going to be a unique scripture study. What I'm going to do is actually, since I've neglected it, oh, you can cut that one off. I'm going to spend time answering a few letters right here. All right? Spend some time answering because, you know, uh, usually when I answer letters, I, I get a bunch of emails right back at me telling me, thank you for answering or, or, you know, somebody else's situation is pertaining to the same thing. All right, are you on? Shalom. You going to lean over like that the whole time? No, sir. Are you comfortable? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Go ahead, Sister Ashley. Go ahead. Let's start with the letters. Shalom. My question is, why do we refer to the Messiah as Jesus instead of his proper Hebrew name? You can go to the next letter. That was a quick one. You can tell there's people that don't listen, can't you? All right, next. Thanks, Pastor Dow. Elder Doug contacted us, and we also made another connection in Wisconsin. Good people are hard to find who have like minds. We appreciate you. Keep doing what you are doing. Much blessings to you. I come on your channel as the Fig Tree Torah Study Group, so you will know when we come on and comment. Big blessings to you, him and his wife. Fig Tree Study Group, huh? Fig Tree Torah Study Group. Fig Tree Torah Study Group. Oh, I wonder where they located at. It doesn't say, does it? You ever heard of them before, Elder Doug? Nope. All right, well, make yourself known so we know uh, where y'all at. Appreciate you listening, tuning in. It's a benefit for you. All right, come on, Sister Ashley. Pastor Dow, blessings to you. My name is, it's a brother, I currently attend a Messianic congregation in Florence, Arizona. Watching your videos on a daily basis and agree with most of what you're saying, I'm asking for prayers. I've seen your garden, and it looks awesome. Your community, I can see, is a blessing. It's nice to see brothers and sisters in Messiah working together and loving each other. Shalom. Well, I'm waiting. Pray for what? Does it state? No, sir. No. All right, what do you pray for when somebody wants you to pray for them, but they don't tell you what? Don't the Bible teach you make your request known? All right, next one. Greetings, straightway. First, allow me to introduce myself. I am, he states his name, a 20-plus year evangelist currently attending Community Connections Church in Lafayette formerly a minister with the Cleveland Cowboy Church in Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm also involved with broadcasting, currently employed with Lafette Broadcasting. Two questions I would like to ask. The first, are your meetings open to the public? And the second, would it be possible for me to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Pastor Dow? This is for my personal benefit. I'm not interested in expose or any such. If either of these are possible, please let me know. At that point, we can discuss things further. I anxiously await word from you. Thank you, and many blessings. Sure, people, uh, the door is always open on the Shabbat up here at the top of the hill. And then we'll discern to see if we want to let you, allow you to come down to eat with us. People don't understand that. You ain't never seen people come here and then as soon as the service is over, they're gone. That's because they hadn't been invited down. You understand me? And usually you don't see those people no more either. Amazing, isn't it? Um, and as uh, far as a sit down, that, that just depends on if I got time after, after the Sabbath. But apparently this is a, a local person that works at a radio station up here, right? Look yeah. Come on. I mean, y'all have to understand, I, I am the most popular figure in this county. Everybody knows me, but I don't know them. Really? Y'all, y'all to see how, they, don't y'all get funny looks now when y'all go off? People, don't y'all, y'all see them eyes on y'all? Y'all celebrities, y'all thank y'all for it. Get a lot of attention. Because there ain't, ain't nobody else up here that's interested in hold, all the holiness churches unfolded. The ones that especially believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Preacher, all of them done went hard back off into the world. I mean hard. If you was to see them, you'd have never even thought that they used to be a Pentecostal hole in this church. I'm serious. Hard. Go ahead, Sister Ash. Shalom, shalom, Pastor. Brother Jason from New York, a.k.a. Mr. Smiley, LOL, emailing you with good tidings and blessings of love, peace, and thanksgiving. First off, please accept my humble love offering just sent via priority mail in hopes of furthering the ministry. I'm grateful of your continued love and tireless commitment towards the chosen people of Yah through Christ the King, Yeshua the Savior. I'm extremely thankful for the call you have put forth to not only come out of her mentally and spiritually, but also physically and that being said, I wanted to give testimony that since I have learned to let go of miscellaneous things, i.e. my storage, my Jeep insurance, using public transportation, my family, so-called friends, and most importantly, the old man and the old me, I have a new job in PA, Pennsylvania, starting September 19, 2016, where I will be relocating to Pennsylvania to live with Brother Arcilio and soon Brother Mike in Pennsylvania. I'm starting the process of getting out one step at a time and able to stay with some excellent saints of whom I have the utmost respect and honor for. I thank you, my pastor, for being a true man of Yah without guile or falsity. You have helped to change my life, sir. I will say it time and time again. I still stand by every word I said in that testimony video, bar none, and will not recant not one word. I love you and pray earnestly for you and Mother Carol and all the saints of Straightway and Israel around the globe. I wanted you to know that I've cleared the move with Elder Brother Felix and still seek your wisdom on the situation. I will be able to save money, pay off debt, help my brothers with the move, not to mention be amongst Israel where iron truly sharpens iron. This is all the Most High's doing. All praises is due to him alone. I sent a small humble offering, plus I sent a little pamphlet that I generally hand out to people who want to know the truth about the Bible. I've been doing this for years but thought to get back to it. Being that I seek to be a profitable servant and laborer for the Most High Yah, please take a look and tell me what you think, and my hope is that if you approve, that we can use it for straightway in some fashion or another. No worries if you're too busy to write back. I'll call in on Blog Talk 2. Again, bless you, and I love you, my beloved brother and pastor. May the Father continue to strengthen you and guide you, to guide you and us into the kingdom. Glory to the Almighty King. Hallelujah. Huh? Brother Jason's encouraged, ain't he? Yes, He's seriously encouraged. Uh, that's good. He, you can tell that he gets the message. Um, you know, when I tell people to come out, I'm not saying that for my benefit. We're already out. You understand what I mean? The proof is always in the pudding. Is that old proverbial saying go? Is that right? And um, I, I would sure hate to be caught um, in those cities. When things start, you, you seeing what's happening in Louisiana right now? You seeing what's happening in California? West Coast getting burned up, East Coast flooding. I mean, really, 20,000 people are homeless in Louisiana. They received 36 inches of rain hmm? in three days. We receive, if we receive two to six inches of rain, Nashville's flooded. That's remarkable, isn't it? Well, Louisiana, most of them places ain't the city. I don't know where they are, but I know that they're the low ground. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't recommend nobody living in Louisiana. Well, how do you know all this? I don't know. Ask the father. Seems to always work, though. It seems to always work. You know, we, we find it hard to believe today that somebody is going to be led by Yah. Because if we don't have nobody led by Yah, then we all going to perish. You can tell the Christian world believes in preachers, even though they're bootlickers and jacklegs and felices and robbers. They believe in them, though. Jason, another one of those people, Brother Jason, is no, one of those people that's moving with fear. You watch and see. It, it's a shame if you are a pastor and you say that I'm your teacher and you listen to me and, and, and within three to five years you're still stuck in that city. Really. Because if you're going to come listen to me, the message ain't going to change. It stays the same. 
Same thing that the, what, what did, what did um, the angels tell Lot? Get out, didn't he? What did Yah tell Abraham? Isn't that amazing, huh? Was Egypt the city? Y'all sent Moses to do what? To deliver them out of the city, right? So that they can come out and do what? Serve him. Make sacrifice to worship him. You get that, right? And whenever we were in the cities, it's because we were disobedient. All the captivities right in the cities because of disobedience. Hmm? There's a few times that they actually helped us to go rebuild Jerusalem. The enemy did. Same one enslaved you. Because it's the fullness of time. But you watch people today, ain't too many people moving with fear. I'm telling them to get out of the city for their benefit, not mine. Hallelujah. Everybody say, oh, I got faith. Well, show me your faith. Because hmm? don't tell me you can't show faith. Faith is not abstract. Brother Jason showing faith. He got rid of it. You know, Brother Jason had a 1996 Jeep in New York, and it was paid for. No tickets, no wrecks. And he was paying $300 plus a month just for insurance. That's what living in the city. That's, so that's a benefit you get for living in the city. It may be good for you, but it ain't good for me, but that's a benefit. Wouldn't you like to have that benefit? To most of you, it's a car. It's a car note. Most of you, that's a car note and insurance. See the perks you get? It's amazing, isn't it? I got one brother up there that the way they do rent is this. If you have a, a three-bedroom apartment, and let's say you have three roommates, it's $850 a month per room. That's New York, New Jersey. Per room. This roommate gets this one. Are you, you ready for the kicker? And if you're going to sleep on the couch and become a resident, that's $500. I need to buy some real estate in New York. These brothers were telling me this when I was up there. I was like, $500 a month to sleep on a couch? Now, don't get me wrong. I was just walking out of the dining hall this evening, and I looked at this cool spot right when the sun sets. It's in between Sister Vicky's home and the old trailer over there, right? And I said, you know what? If I was by myself, I could be happy with one room. If I was by myself, I could sleep in that, in that guest room or that guest house and live that way until, until I die. I could. I just built an office off the end of this over here. The other than that, I'm fine. All you need is a bed anyway. I'm talking about me. If it was just me, that's all I could need. But I'm not going to pay no $500 to sleep on somebody's couch. I wonder how much it costs to use the refrigerator. And you, you still got to split the water bill, electric bill. This is reality. See the reason why I say get out of the city? But what I know, huh? what I know, they see it as a benefit. You get ease and excess, and, and they think they're doing something up there because they get to ride, ride the subway everywhere, ride the train everywhere. I told you, right? To get in, 
We had to pay $5 one time. And then we had to pay $15 to get over bridge. You're listening. And then we had to pay six, five dollars to get, or sixteen dollars to get out, and another five dollars to get off the interstate. Imagine if you had to go to work every day. And then, but hey, don't worry about it. You can get a cut. You can get you one of them travel cars, travel passes, and only pay thirty-two dollars in one day, both ways. Now, what's thirty? Two times 30. Huh? Was that $640 a month? I don't know what it is. I'm not a mathematician. I can, I can put, do some timing up here, but y'all y'all got them calculations in your head. And they are glorying because they don't have no car note. The reason why I don't want car note because they won't pay no car note plus that heavy insurance. You understand what I mean? That car no plus that heavy insurance. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot for living. Hmm. Paul says that. Hi, Pastor Dow. I wanted to send an email to inquire about the possibility to visit Straightway and learn about the community. I currently live in Southern California and I'm growing more and more tired of the lifestyle here. I'm a musician, a drummer, and a music teacher. And I've been so blessed by your incredible informative videos and thoughts on the current state of secular society. I feel Yeshua has been weighing it on my heart to come out of Babylon and be set apart as you have said in your videos. It would be great to hear back from you to hear some advice as to the best way to become someone who truly lives the Hebrew Israelite lifestyle. Thank you for your wisdom and teachings. Yeah, you can come visit. You get a hotel to Doug, call the dining hall. You know, the Bible in the New Testament says, come out of her, my people. Now that her is talking about these pagan churches. Then in, in another place it says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Yah even told us that he has severed us from the people. Now that don't mean because I'm telling you to come out that you got a place to stay here because you don't. Everybody assumed that they, since they obeying the pastor's voice, of saying come out that I automatically got a room and board for them. Nope. It takes time. You have to be prepared before you can even live on a community. Because you like doing things your way. And here, we don't do things our way. Where, can you imagine? Here I am, the pastor and the leader of the community, and yet I, I, I never go anywhere without somebody knowing. I'm People hardly ever have a hard time getting a hold of me. But saints, they can leave off the land. You try to call them, you can't even reach them. They know my whereabouts 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. They can always contact me. But I tell you, you go do things. You don't want nobody to know where you're going. So you can't do that here. Because we're accountable to one another. We have breakfast at 8. You're supposed to be there before 8. When we say breakfast at 8, that don't mean you come in the door at 8. That means you're sitting down ready for prayer by 8. Dinner at 3. The only one that's exempt from that is me. Well, who exempt you? I did. The leader is never late. His duties always require him to be elsewhere. And then immediately you go, well, ain't that a double standard? Wonder how long Israel waited on Yah before he came down Mount Sinai. I wonder how many days, well, forget, we ain't going to put Yah in there. How many days they wait on Moses? See, we got a, a, a mindset that tells us that we equal with everybody on every plan. And then the very equality that you think that you may want to have with something, you, you're not even able to meet the calling. It's utterly amazing the way this mind works. It is. Utterly appalling. The one thing we haven't learned in this American society is respect. Did y'all hear my video today when I was talking about that 
white reporter. I reported on that a few years ago when she went over there and when they had all them riots over in Libya. She got raped. She went over here with, with her blonde hair, tight pants, and them men showed her exactly what they thought about her too. You can't be going dressing like Americans over in other cultures. Now, America and all the Western um, countries is trying to condemn all the Eastern and other cultures because they don't permit homosexuality. Y'all know in the 60s that they had literally defined homosexuality as a disease, a mental disease? Well, guess who's running the country now? Mentally deranged people. Now, guess what? You hear me talk about the homosexuals, right? The homosexuals talk about us. Are you following me? And, and, and whoever, whatever I talk about in any form of lifestyle, I'm going to be judged by that. Because it says, just not unless you be judged. For whatever measure you judge, it'll be meat back to you again. That means whatever you say about anything in life, you're going to be judged to that level and a little more. And America has really messed you up eternally because they've taught you you got a mouth to move. They gave you freedom of speech, and you can run on and say whatever you want. You may have that under the secular government here in America, but you don't have it in Yah. He tells you to bridle your tongue. Uh-oh. You, you make all kinds of judgments. You make them in your mind. You make them with your mouth. You make them behind the scenes, behind closed doors. And you're going to be me. You're going to visit that. Especially if you make a judgment on something when you call it sin, but the Bible don't call it sin. You're in trouble. You're in some serious trouble. I've seen people be harsh judges, and then a judgment come right back up on them in a few years, and they can't handle it. I told you this thing, I preached a message a long time ago, this Bible's a loaded gun. I've seen it take out a lot of people, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. I'm serious. Come on, Sister Ashley. Good afternoon, Pastor Dow. My name is, it's a woman. I've been following your YouTube channel for about a year now. I believe the same things you believe. I want out of this Ponzi scheme of a system. Here's my problem. We have a mortgage. My husband is 73 years old. I am 53. Oh, oh, oh. is that not bad? You're 73 years old. The husband is. She's 53, and they have a mortgage. That's bad. That, that's bad. See, that, at, that, at that age, that old trailer's looking good. I told you, we have a system that is designed to take everything from you. There are people that go out there and spend four or $500,000 on homes, and then you live in it, you pay for it after 30 years, if you make it, but you're not going to do that in this environment because the jobs are just simply not there. You, you ain't going to do it. You're just not going to do it. And as soon as you get sick, because that's what happens when you live in this country. You follow me? As soon as you get sick, you, it's illegal. They almost make it illegal for you to die at home. All our saints is buried down in that cemetery. They died at home, right here on the land. And as soon as you turn around and die, if you go to that hospital, because you, your insurance, they're going to cancel your insurance, especially after you run up all them exorbitant amount of rates. Then they're going to start immediately going after your assets. Mm -hmm. And then after they get finished taking your assets or charging whatever is owed for the assets, then they have a, if you have an exorbitant home, they're going to charge a, your family a luxury tax. Then there's an estate tax. And they're going to be squabbling and fighting over pennies and beans by the time the lawyers get finished getting their cut. Uncle Sam gets his cut. It's a, it's a design. 
It's a grand design. You die, you have a will, you have children, they're going to be fighting over it. Makes no difference. Because you don't teach them, you can die and your children can be 30 years old. And you can leave them at the house and that house will be in the hands of some, some bootlick or some government within 10 years. Go ahead, but 73 years old, man, it's pretty bad to have a mortgage at 73 years old. That means you lived 73 years and hadn't learned nothing. Come on. My husband is 73 years old. I'm 53. He's talking about going to law school to be a lawyer. Now, why in the world would you talking about trying to go in debt to go to law school at 73 years old? You already on three years borrowed grace. If by reason of strength you may make it to 80. But you see how foolish we are today? 73 years old, you're going to go to law school. Who going to hire you? By that time, you should have had 20 years under your belt. 20, 30 years under your belt in law. You know, to go to law school, bare minimum, eight years before you even graduate. And he's 73, so 80 years old. What are you going to get a case doing? Anyway, y'all see the mindset, though. And then the first thing that happened is that people start jumping on my case because they're not used to a man talking like this. And all I'm trying to do is avoid you a bunch of pain. 73 years old. Talking about going to law school. And law school ain't cheap. And you know they got to go in debt to do it because they got a mortgage. Pastor, we don't have money for this. <laughs> And I'm aware the chances of him being a lawyer at his age is slim and none. You better believe it. I believe he's even considering getting a loan. We have been together for 13 years. I did not marry him for money. I know you're not thinking that. I'm just putting that out there. He don't have any money. I love my husband dearly. Hey, a ain't no big deal. The majority of Americans don't have any money. You see, you see these houses down here, right? These houses down here? These houses down the road down here, man, you see these nice big old houses, them people don't own them homes. They don't own the homes, nor the cars, or the vehicles they have in them. They got to go out and they got to slave labor. And they got to meet that quota every single month. Sometimes, you know what's costing people in excess of $5,000 a month just to live? I remember we had this, a couple of old Ford trucks on the community a long, long time ago, boy. That's my favorite vehicle to drive. Favorite the old Ford trucks. I, man, I drive them things smiling, cheesing, paid for. Everybody else needs new modern vehicles. And people think our vehicles are modern. And we have nice vehicles, but they're not modern. All our vehicles got over 100,000 miles on them. So I'm 200. One 300. And we drive that all the time. That truck got, what, 330,000 miles on it? Mm-mm-mm. And everybody always asking, where'd you get the truck? Same place you did. Amazing, isn't it? Now, here we are young and know better than that. How you live to be this age and don't know better? At that, see, at this time, in this age in life, in this junction in life, you're supposed to be able to teach the younger people. And she should be in a position to teach the, the younger sisters, the younger mothers, how to guide the house. See, we have nothing but foolish old people that's gone on before us. Best thing they can do is just downsize and, and just get it just as simple as possible. At least get some peace in a home. Enjoy a few of them before you pass on, huh? Come on. I love my husband dearly, but I have a 23-year-old autistic son. He will never be able to support himself. Mm -mm. I can't stay in the system. We don't see eye to eye about the economy and what's going on. I guess you could say I'm married to a sheeple. I can no longer go down this road of doom. I asked him to make a choice, school 
or let's get out of this system and get prepared, he said school. Well, first of all, I mean, you can offer information to him, but you ain't in, in no position whatsoever at all to tell him what to do. He's your head. You can try to reason with him. Is that right? You can try to entreat him, but you can't tell him what to do. Can we tell the father what to do as the wife? Is he going to listen to us telling him what to do? We can declare, make our case known, but we ain't telling him nothing. So if he makes mistakes, I mean, he's old enough, he should have learned by him, but apparently he hasn't, so guess what? You, you, hey, that's what you're in for. You just got to learn how to endure the mistakes with him. But try to do your best to, to become a wise woman real fast. Maybe you can speak with him. I don't want to end my marriage, but it's looking like that's where we're headed. How can you end a marriage? You see the mindset? How can you end a, Where do you get this from? Y'all hear this? I ain't going to spend all day going over 1 Corinthians 7 right here because people, they can read it and still don't know it. This is utterly amazing, man. Y'all here to talk, though. And these people who say they listen to me, they had not been listening too long, you can tell that. See what Christianity and American society has done to us? And then guess what? Breath of God, your body going to be sitting up there answering to y'all. You're going to be answering not to the laws of the United States of America. You, not to the churches. You're going to be answering and being judged according to what he said. That's why I keep telling us. If you want to understand him, the best thing to do is start to learn un, learn. And understand what it means to be married. Because that's what that whole book is all about. A covenant relationship. Mm. Hopefully you can find time to speak with him. Please feel free to email me or call me. Thank you for your time. Yo, Doug, you can feel free to email him and call him, brother. Hallelujah. Shalom, Pastor Dow and Sister Carol. I hope that you and the Straightway family are all keeping well. Boy, it's been a while. I just looked at the date of my last email, and our last contact was December 2014. Loads has happened since then. I just wanted to drop mm. by and let you know that we miss our Straightway family immensely. As communicated in our last email, we have moved to the South Pacific since December 2014, and it's definitely been a challenge on every level. That's the people from Australia. My husband has been living in Sydney because of his work and commutes over to visit my girls and I every couple months or so. Y'all hear this? Y'all hear this? This is the family from Australia. And um, he has to, they moved, but the husband has to commute because he has to go where the work is in order, because apparently where he is, the family can't come. They're just like if I'm uh, down here at the Shell Corporation. Offshore. These, these men work offshore. You can't bring, they ain't got no uh, homes and apartments with your family out there in the middle of the ocean. I mean, you just heard Brother Jesus, right? Brother Jesus and Justin just got married. They ain't even been married a year. Not even six months. And he's on drill. He, he's out here playing Marine. And he ain't coming back home till late September. That means he's got two months away, brand new wife away from him. It sounds like so, Carol and I, we weren't even married a good four or five days, and I took off three months immediately on a mission. That's the way it's, it's, it's happening nowadays. So, you driving a truck, don't think that you're doing anything by missing out on a week. At least you get to come home. That's just the environment that we're in. And most people are not willing to suffer the pain early on in order to enjoy the fruits of the labor later on. Most people are not willing to make sacrifice when they're young. When I tell you I used to work three jobs, you think I'm kidding? Two jobs. I ain't kidding. Not, not in the least bit. Amazing, huh? Nowadays, you'd be fortunate if you can even find one. If you do got one, and they pay you over $10 an hour, you better go and work like Joseph. 
Because we're not in an environment now where you can assume that you can just be lazy and get fired and that somebody else is going to go and hire you now. You, you're getting ready to go down in value. Because it just ain't there. It ain't there. We are impoverished as a country. And you can feel it. Come on. My husband's in, been living in Sydney because of his work, commutes over to visit my girls and I every couple of months or so, and last year we were apart nine months of the year. Hey, sound like he's almost a soldier now in, in, in the elites, don't he? But the one thing he's doing, he's taking care of home. That's, that's a man. He's not neglecting his duties and responsibilities. See what I mean? That, that's a man. We prayed about owning land here without having to loan funds from the bank and so to buy time until my husband resigns from work next year, we started a business locally. I thank the Most High for his faithfulness, especially his grace and mercy because our journey has had me on my knees literally crying out to Yah every other day. We work 16 to 17 hour days, most weeks with the business and find ourselves falling into compromise and disobedience. The internet is very expensive here, so we're unable to watch your teachings or Bible studies. When we have data, I use for marketing the business online via social media, but also more importantly, to check into the Straightway website to read and download your newsletters. I confess, I've been desper desperately wanting to get in contact with you both, but my pride has got the best of me. I was too embarrassed to write you both because I felt my compromise and lack of integrity has caused me to neglect my responsibilities to the flock and especially to my pastors in terms of tithing and sowing into the ministry. See what happens when you don't stay faithful? You let the cares of this world and cares of life come in and then the devil starts weighing you down? No, no, he can only do it. He, he does everybody else like it, but not you, right? You super duper saint, right? I tell you, go ahead. As you have always shared, Pastor Dow, you don't need to preach about tithing. The flock should honor those whom the Most High has placed over us, Jeremiah 315. Things have been tough financially. Upon moving here, we lost thousands at the hands of a relative in a home purchase gone wrong. Although the hands of a who? A relative. Hey, ain't they faithful? Ain't they faithful? No. Uh, they just, I tell you, man, you ain't, ain't, ain't nothing like family. Jesus told you that they're going to be your greatest foes, but we don't believe it. We're going to trump the word. Unbelievable. They faithful, though, ain't they? Faithful devils. Come on. Although the business is profitable and has great potential moving forward, we are having to pay three lots of rent and leases, two here on the island and one including in Australia. Some days I get tired and just want to throw in the towel. Our lives in Australia seemed much easier and less stressful. No one bothered us there. We observed the Sabbath. We were able to wear a head covering without anyone looking at you sideways. We were able to observe the feast days without having to justify everything to everyone. But where we live now, it's different. Our faith and beliefs are questioned on a daily basis. Our decision to not sell pork items in our place of business is always challenged. Our non-observance of Sunday worship is questioned, and we don't have many friends, which is fine. We actually prefer it that way anyway. I guess what I'm trying to say and ask for is your prayers, Pastor. The island is very religious with churches costing millions erected on every street corner while the locals live in poverty. The spirit of dishonesty, theft, corruption, poverty, sexual abuse, and incest is rampant here. Not to mention cross-dressing and transgender, which is openly practiced and accepted by the government, church, and community. The manifestation of familiar and unfamiliar spirits and every other filthy spirit is evident also here. I guess living on an island, this filth seems to be magnified 1,000 times. You're probably both wondering why we moved here. Something I ask myself some days, and funny enough, we have peace here, if that makes sense. Not with our surroundings, obviously, but with Yah's plan for us here. The peace of knowing that Yahweh is greater than the mess around us, and if anything, it's our own disobedience and sin that has separated us from Yah and our purpose here. Your teachings and Bible studies have not left my husband and I. We hold on to the Most High's promises for our lives. However, we understand that Yahweh is holy, therefore, we are to be holy. I'm hum I humbly ask on behalf of my husband and children for your prayers, Pastor, and I know first that must start with repentance. Thank you both for being an ear for me. The enemy has tried long enough to keep me in my pride and compromise and rob me of the blessings to be reconnected with you both and our straightway community. But I know that the Most High has a greater purpose for myself and my family here on the island. 
May Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. I praise the Most High for the pathway of hope straightway ministry is to the lost sheep of Israel. I will stay in touch. Hallelujah. Good to hear from you again. I will lift you up. Come on. Hi, Pastor Dow. We are thinking of selling seven acres with a 40-foot block building and a block house located at Graysville, Tennessee. We appreciate your work and thought about giving you first opportunity to buy it. It's on a mountain. It was a farm in the past. A um, couple of names, and thank you for waking people up to the inherited lies. I may go and look at it. They sent me a Google map of it. I may go look at it. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Dow, I live a righteous life according to the Father's laws, status, and commandments, for which my marriage ended in divorce after 30 years. May I come oh, and... Oh, wait a minute. Their, their marriage did what? Ended after 30 years. Ended in divorce. A marriage ended in divorce after 30 years. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. I believe as a result of living a righteous life, the way that it's stated. Read, read on a little more. Okay. May I come and live and work at the Lafette campus among the assembly? No. Work does not scare me. I don't mind learning. Good, but you ain't come living here. Please let me know. I, you, you know now. I mean, 30 years. Usually after you've been with somebody 30 years, who wants your old raggedy self? You understand what I mean? 30 years. Get divorced after 30 years? Believe me, I understand things happen. Believe you me. Some people just fall off the deep end. Well, you can't do nothing if somebody decides to scalp and kick the traces on you. But after them 30 years, you should have had a nest egg to be able to divide up and not be left empty-handed. Isn't that right? I mean, if you've been married that long, it's obviously been working, right? Should have something. Isn't that right? Should have something. Who wrote that, a male or female? Last one. Oh, it is? All right. One more, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Man, I tell you, man, the devil working, ain't he? The devil working. Don't get me wrong. You married to somebody ungodly and they kick the trace they want to serve the devil, you free. Praise God, you free. Hallelujah. However much they weigh, you can tell somebody that you lost that much pounds. Hmm? I'm 200 pounds lighter. You're supposed to lay aside every weight. And the sin, it should also say sinner. They so easily want to beset you, though, ain't they? Whew. Sometimes it's them heavy weights that can't, they don't even allow you to run the race with patience. But y'all see what we run into, into in society? See what we run into? I had somebody ask me a question about slavery today. And, um, and it says, is it true that the the Bible says that a man or woman can sell themselves to another Hebrew and indenture servant to us. Yeah, sure does. Sure does. If you ain't got nowhere to go. Now, try to tell somebody that you can come here under contract and be our slave and see what happens. See? First thing they think about, especially a white person, is them damn whips on the back that they put on the Negroes. And they're like, ain't no way in hell I'm going under that kind of slavery. Hmm? They probably look at me and say, man, you probably hit pretty hard, too. <laughs> but we're not to treat our brother that way. It's actually an honored position. We're all slaves anyway. Uh, let's go on before we I get started because it ain't, anyway, come on. I hope you and Sister Carol and everyone at Straightway are doing well. It's been a while since we spoke, and I wanted to give you an update. I was doing pretty good till I fell off that trailer this week. 
mess my arm up, boy. <laughs> At least I didn't break a leg. Come on. I've been struggling for the last few weeks. Bro, Brett and, and Bro, Scott. Boy, they was on it too, boy. As soon as I hit that ground and rolled, man, they was all I seen was dust, but they were right there. They picked me up fast, boy. Come on. I've been struggling for the last few weeks with regard to my decision on where and whom I will fellowship with. This is, to me, the most important decision in life. After all, this Now, wait a minute. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's, the, that's that letter from Canada, right? Don't mention no names. Yes, sir, Canada. Now, this is somebody I visit. We, we've seen them in Canada. They spent three or four days with us. Up there, we was all in fellowship. And got healed, got devils cast out. You follow me? By that fruit, you should know them. Watch all these digressions in this one right here. Start at the beginning. Watch this. I'm going to use this as a teaching tool because it's not important who it is. It's important of what they're saying because this is still the mindset of people today. Watch this. It's been a while since we spoke, and I wanted to give you an update in my spiritual walk. I've been struggling for the last few weeks with regard to my decision on where and whom I will fellowship with. This, to me, is the most important decision in life. After all, this individual will be responsible for teaching me how to make it to the kingdom. Yeah, that's something. Read on. I'm also responsible to use discernment and seek out that which is good and righteous before allowing it into my life. I, therefore, did a lot of research in the past few weeks on the straightway ministry and you as a pastor. Isn't that something? That's being spiritual, isn't it? Isn't that something? They, they, what did Jesus say? You touched me, you handled me, you ate with me, you were following me? Fellowship, went to baptism. You understand what I mean? Saw the power of y'all, people getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Sister Carol casting demons out, out of them. And then you get finished with all that, we got to go and, 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 and search out and check you out. Isn't that amazing? Now, don't the book teach us? Don't the book teach us? Because, first of all, I don't mind being checked out. You understand what I mean? But I do know the spirit behind it. And if I said it once, said it a thousand times, I've already been checked out. I told so Carol and I said it all the time, what we need to do is run background checks on y'all. We already approved of y'all. Name written down, Lamb's Book of Life. We have the signs that follow. And you are the seal of my pastorship. That's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Hey, uh, Brother Scott, get 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And read 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 5. This, this is the reason why we have to use this as a teaching tool right here. You know the reason why? Because, <laughs> you know what's amazing? You can tell many of you ain't learned nothing from all your years of churching. They ain't learned nothing. Because I'm already clean. I should be worried about defiling myself with all y'all. Isn't that amazing? Well, watch this. Read, Brother Scott. Go ahead. That's your faith. Hey, we can't hear him, Elder Doug. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Are you in the first verse? Fifth verse. First Corinthians 2, 1. And I, brethren, uh -huh. when I came to you. When Paul came to the brethren at Corinth. When Pastor Dow came to Canada, we're going to bring it on up modern time. All right, come on. Came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yah. Isn't that something? Read on. For I determined not to know anything among you. Y'all hear that? Because I already know what you are. Ex-whores, whoremongers, liars, cheats, adulterers, abusers of yourself with mankind. I already know what you are. Don't none of you surprise me. I can look at your face and see oppression all in you. You look at my face, you see glory. Yeah. 
You, all of you straight up sinners. What about you? I'm the one talking to you, ain't I? That means I had to come to that reality first. <laughs> isn't that amazing? Uh, utterly amazing, isn't it? Read that verse again. Not the first, but the second one I believe you on. For I determined not to know anything among you. Except what, brother Scott? Say Jesus Christ. And him what? Crucified. But we want to go after you meet the messenger. We want to go and check out everything. And you know what's amazing? What you, what nobody ever checks the sources. As if these sources are some righteous authority. What happens when you rebuke and you reprove in the gate? You get hated, don't you? If I rebuke and reprove people and stuff, what do you think they're going to say about me after they hold that bitterness and unforgiveness in them when they leave? And some of them, matter of fact, 95% of them ain't even never stepped foot on this land. <laughs> Wouldn't that be declared as a false witness? A witness is somebody who was there. I saw it. Not somebody heard, right? Paul said, my determination is, is not to know anything among you because humanity didn't surprise Paul. Except Jesus Christ and him what? But then when you come and you want to know a preacher, you want to know everything about his past. I'll tell you what, we'll sit down and we'll go over each other's past. That's one thing I ain't ashamed of. I'm ashamed of the sin of it, but I ain't ashamed of being redeemed from it. Yeah, ain't no, you can, I'm the last man on this earth that you ever going to find me being condemned for anything. I ain't going to never be condemned over nothing. Look at him looking. Most people can't say that. I'm serious. Paul is coming to, you know, how immoral was Corinth? And he said, I'm determined not to know anything among you. I don't want to know nothing about you. I don't want to know your past life. No, oh boy. All I want to know is Christ and him crucified. Read on. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Read verse three. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, mm -hmm. but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Isn't that something? Y'all got to report what we did the whole time up in Canada, right? Demonstration of the power of the Spirit. And these same people that want to go and check out Pastor Dow, ain't none of them got no demonstration and no power of the Spirit. As the world would say, ain't that the proverbial pot calling the kettle black? Amazing, isn't it? Mm. Demonstration of the power of the Spirit. See, Paul today wouldn't even be qualified to talk to us because we already know that he was a murderer. Because the commandments say you shouldn't murder. So, Paul, you know, we need to go and look in your past and stuff and see if we want to even listen to you because it's very important to our soul. Ain't nobody preaching the truth but Paul, though. Where else you going to go? In other words, God led you over here to hear me. Where else you going to go? The only place you can go, you can go to another place where the fire ain't on your ass so hot. Uh-oh. This is a non-sugar coat ministry. I need one of you sisters to take a picture. I need y'all to get, get some, um, some, some uh, cherry chapstick on, put on your lips, and, and, and uh, do them like this, and find some big old granulated sugar and put your mouth on, I take a picture of it and say, no sugar. <laughs> Y'all hearing this, right? Yes, sir. People do this stuff all the time. Read on, Brother Scott. 
that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. So your faith shouldn't stand in the what? Wisdom of man, but what's the first thing they go do? Go look for the wisdom of man who they don't even know, never met, never talked to, don't know their mannerism or anything. Well, Pastor, you ain't perfect. No, I ain't sure I ain't, man. Mm-mm. Boy, I used to love honeys. Look at them looking at me. I, I can't preach now. I can't preach now. Dang it. Man, I, can't, I cannot preach. I cannot preach now because pastor used to love honeys. And I ain't talking about Sue B. honey either. Man, you people, boy, y'all something else, man. Ain't they something else? So I guess what? Y'all, might, y'all can't listen to me no more. We might as well throw the Bible away. Moses, that damn murderer. Paul, that murderer. David, that adulterer, writing all these books. Who in the hell David think he is? Writing all these books and poems and poetry and stuff and taking another man's life. He not only he, is he a murderer. Murder must be in the Hebrew faith, boy. Not only is he a murderer, but he done took a, a, and committed adultery. Um, 2 Samuel, hold that way yet, go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. In other words, there's not one man of Yah in the Bible except Christ. Come on. Yeah. That's worthy of you even listen to because remember, you just like him, you ain't never seen. And you people got the audacity to want to come up there and try to judge somebody. And then going to judge you by what false witnesses say. Hey, you ought to see what's happening out there. All them people that so-called judge me on a lot of things. Ooh boy, the, I mean, ooh boy, I mean, man, I could run a list down right now. But the only reason why I don't do it is because I don't gloat in people falling. I already know they're going to do it. I told you, we're going to find out who's the man of Yah. Because all these people, if they're judging me, then they're fancy themselves, okay, they are the man of Yah. I'm still standing, and they done failed. Not only they failed, they, 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 their home is shipwrecked. Your home shipwrecked, and I got a whole bunch of people want to join my home. With my old tired butt. <laughs> you know, the devil hate that stuff. You know that, don't you? The devil in the people, you know what I mean? <laughs> Read that second time, brother Scott. I think I got it right, though. And David said unto Nathan. Ah, David said unto Nathan, what did he say? I have sinned. Against, I have what? I have sinned. Read on. Against Yahweh. He has sinned against who? Yahweh. So all sin is against who? Yahweh. Sure, he did against his brother and stuff, but he despised the commandment of Yah. Yah's the one who gave the commandment, right? Read on. And Nathan said unto David. And what did Nathan say? Yahweh hath also put away thy sin. You think David give a damn what about anybody says? <laughs> After Yah done, Yah said he had put it a. Oh, it's written down in the scripture, but you know what? Yahweh never, ever in all the annuals of eternity never remind David of that sin. David, his, when Yah said he put it away, how far does he separate? Far from the what? East to the west? How far is that? <clears throat> Where does he put it at? Where does he throw it at? Into depth to the sea. Now, what does y'all think about you people who want to go and dig up sin? Uh-oh. I mean, you want to go dig up. First of all, you don't even know if it's really truly sin, but you want to go dig it up anyway. Matter of fact, I think I actually wrote down that passage for the that dig it up, dig it up. I'm going to show you the spirit in, in these people. Um, hey, Proverbs 16, 27, Brother Scott. But finish, fi- finish um, 2 Samuel 12, 13. Thou shalt not die. He shall not die because David's getting ready to what? Die. He killed somebody. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, life for life. 
Why you think y'all say you shouldn't? You, you're not going to die. Man, he had to do some serious repentance. He had to do some serious meeting of y'all's conditions. You don't think David was happy that he wasn't going to die? See, when David, man, when he made some mistakes, man, he made some catastrophic I'm that 70,000, it, it what gets me every time I think about it. How, how do you go out and look at all those women and those fatherless children? That's rough. All past down, you trying to justify sin. No, what I'm trying to do is show you what sin is. See, when I started preaching on biblical marriage, First thing people want to do is start accusing me of sin. And I ask you, show me in the Bible where it's biblical marriage is sin. Show me having more than one wife is a sin. Crickets. Big time crickets. And what they do is they jump. And the first thing they do, they think they're judging man, but they're judging y'all. Because if I had sinned, I mean, by now, I should have been judged. If I'm sinning, I should have been judged by now. Because all my enemies are being judged and have been judged. I'm telling you, they, wait till I tell you this last one. Mm. I'm telling you, he came out vicious too, boy. Home gone. G-O-N-E. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? You get these people go out there and they have their little sorry feelings and emotions. They run to YouTube or run to whatever social media network and they tell you their side of the story and you like a gullible fool believe it. Now I'm not talking about this sister right here. I'm talking about anyone. Because I ain't never went and researched nobody. I remember when Mike Holland, before he decided he's going to Come up here in fellowship this time. He said, I ran a background check on you. I said, what'd you find? Oh, nothing. And I said, my brother, my question to you is, is what, what happened to the witness of the spirit? I mean, if we follow your standard, I could have been a felon, brother, and I'd have never been a brother to you because you ran a background check on me. Paul, would, Paul has never passed a background check. Y'all hear me? Never pass a background check. None of the prophets ever, they would never pass a background check. Now, when the Bible says, I'm determined not to know anything among you, they're determined to know everything among you. They want to base you on, instead of who you are and what you are today, they want to base you on your past. And that's the same people that were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Same people that, boy, if we were put, put a, a spreadsheet up here and compare sins to sins, man, you better shut up. Hypocrites. Read on, brother Scott. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. An ungodly man does what? Diggeth up evil. Did you know I ain't never checked out none of y'all? Elder Doug, have you ever checked out anybody when they come through that door and they start fellowship with us? Have you ever went back in there and, and uh, jumped in to see if you could find anything about their life? Anything at all? Nothing. Not one thing. Oh, Pastor Doug, we're supposed to prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Yeah, start with you first. See, we got... Paul telling the people, I'm determined not to know, but they are determined to know. And then what they do know is what they know naturally, not that they know any facts at all themselves because they were not eyewitnesses. Somebody got to be a false apostle. Somebody got to be a false brother. Somebody got to be a false sister. Somebody got to be false. Now we live in a world that is sociably acceptable. Go out here for two men to walk down the street holding hands. And now people don't even get upset at seeing that. Now you got to explain to your children what that is. But if a man has two, three, four wives, all of a sudden by your mission, he's what? What is he? 
What is y'all going to say for, about him in eternity? Look at you. That's probably the reason why I can't ever get nobody to debate. They all watch. You know they watch. Straightway Truth is the best show on earth today. They love them skits. An ungodly man diggeth up evil. Read on. And in his lips there is as a burning fire. Is it, and in his lips is as a what? Burning, burning fire. So when you go on to so-called look me up and check me out, that means that you are an ungodly man. Or that means in a generic form too, or an ungodly woman. And the reason why you do what you do is because you are ungodly. Especially after you done been around me, been around my wife, we prayed for you, to help deliver you. Are you following me? People getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Nobody can deny the power of y'all. We had a wonderful time up there. And after all that, what devil is it that got you going and want to check me out? Have you checked out the people who's supposed to so-called say something to me? Say something about me. Have you checked them out? An ungodly man does what? Diggeth up evil. Isn't that amazing? And in his lips is a burning fire. Fire, read on. A forward man sow a strife. A forward man sow of what? Strife, read on. And a whisperer. Separateth chief friends. That's the whole spirit right there is to separate chief friends. Now, let me tell you something about Pastor Dow you don't know. Tell him. <laughs> Look at him looking. Now, come and tell me something about you so I can tell the whole world. Proverbs 9 7 says, He that reproveth a scorner giveth to himself shame. You hear that? Now, what we got today is, is that when you're reproving people, like right now, we get reproved and rebuked all the time in here, don't we? Sometimes you get it personally. Are you following? And at that time, you're not showing shame. What happens is, nowadays, is an offense enter in. Then you go out, and then that's when you show that the whole time you were a scorner. You hid scorning while you were here. And the fence was building up like a cancer inside of you. And then when you got out there, boy, you arrogantly started making miles at. And the definition for scorner, check this out, is one to make miles at and talk arrogantly. To boast, to scorn, to mock, to deride, um, to be inflated, to scoff, to act as a scorner, to show oneself a mocker. So he that reproveth the scorner get to himself shame, and he that rebuketh the wicked man get to himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner. That's if you know that they're one. I told you, people today, they, they hiding like they're not. Lest he hate thee, so a scorner would do what? Hate you, and rebuke a wise man, and he would do what? Love you. Isn't that something? So everybody who you going out there, well, let me just say the the 2% out there that made videos. They all mad because they got rebuked and corrected. And they show that they're not wise because they don't love. And what you need to do is go look at these people's lifestyle because by their fruits, you shall know them if you're going to go that route. I wouldn't recommend you looking at nobody's life. I would recommend you knowing them where they're at right now. At least that's what my, myself and Elder Doug do. We give y'all the benefit of the doubt. Y'all, what y'all afraid I'm going to sin? I wonder what happened if I did sin. Paul said, y'all knew my infirmity in the flesh. And he even caused you to not even to despise me. But y'all today, boy, what kind of spirit y'all got on y'all? And don't get me wrong, I have no desire to go out and just start sinning. Because sin is very deceitful. Oh yeah, you, you go out there and you start fooling around, messing around with sin. It's going to take you farther than you want to go. Mm -hmm. And you may not even get back from, the st from with it, staying. Mm -mm. No, nah, I'm telling you, you don't want to toy around and fool around and sin in any way, shape, fashion, or form. 
I'm probably one of the most honorable men that you probably met in life. Even if you, even if you have an accusation in front, against me, don't do it just me if you're all mad and upset. Let's bring it for the whole assembly. How many times y'all see me do that? You see what happens, don't you? Next thing you know, we got the demons manifest of getting a funny brain out of the well. And we all sitting here looking, what is that? What is he doing? What that? Get the funny brain out of the... And you got an accusation against me? Well, we, we all equal. We should all be elders. Where does it say that in the book? Where does it say, where does it say that in we all be elders? Huh? As a matter of fact, you know, I'm supposed to be esteemed highly in love for my work's sake. Uh-oh. No, oh, that's what the book said. See, all these people, they want to be judge, jury, and execution, but they don't even know the word to even live by it. It's sad. Read on some more. I must say what I saw on the surface was quite disturbing, but <laughs> after a lot of prayers, I realized that your enemies all have a strong spirit of jealousy condemning them. And watch this. There's so much chaos around your ministry via YouTube. Now, what? Where's the chaos around our ministry? Y'all look like chaos? Around my ministry. Chaos. We don't know nothing about it. Because we don't go listen to all that foolishness. Now, what chaos is, is when you go look at their, look, look at their life. That's what chaos is. <laughs> you want to see some chaos, all them people you're listening to, you looking at, go check their life out. That's chaos. That is utter confusion. Read on. There's so much chaos around your ministry via YouTube that I decided to walk away from it. But then I decided to painstakingly watch every complaint and pray <laughs> for discernment. Now, see what I'm talking about? Man, you're walking away. To, see, that's schizophrenia. See, the devil got y'all jacked up. Don't know where you're coming or going. We'll see how she does after this. And everybody else. Is, is Pastor Dow married? Does he got another wife? If I had three or four of them, I wouldn't tell you. You know why? Because you want to know. Yeah, come on. Die knowing. <laughs> Devil. Look at that something. If I fart in the shower, I got to tell the whole world. Pastor Dow passed gas in the shower. Oh my God! Don't use that stall, brothers. It's, it's like the whole world don't come to an end because I done blew gas. Oh man, I'm done. At least we ain't got no homosexuals up here in the pulpit. We ain't got no homosexuals playing on these on these instruments. At least my fingernails ain't painted black. It's a shame, isn't it? It's a literal shame. It's a, and it should be a shame. Elder Doug, you sure you haven't? Now, you know, bro, lies go to the pit, right? You sure you ain't never did a background check or check out some of these people? And Elder Doug ain't got time for it. I ain't got time for it. Y'all hear that? See, that's how you can keep yourself in the love of Yah. What is this spirit to where you, you just can't wait to, to try to find something so, and you just, it's something inside of you that wants somebody to fall. What is it? I want you to fall. I want you to fail. I done fell a few times, but I ain't trying to get to seven either. I got to quote that because they probably don't even know what that means. It's because behavior already shows you don't know what the Bible means, says. Isn't that something? It's amazing, isn't it? Read on, Ash. I decided to painstakingly watch every complaint and pray for discernment. I didn't realize <coughs> that you were correct in each You know, what happened? I was not putting no evil thing for before my eye. Is that only for us? I told you, every one of us is sitting here is because Yah saved us from our sins. He didn't save us in our sins. 
and we ain't no saved sinners. <laughs> There's not a just man on this earth that does good and sinneth not. Well, but you still sinning. Then talk to y'all. Tell them to send a hot thunderbolt and strike me down. Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? But I'll tell you what y'all will say to y'all. Touch not my anoint. That's what he would say. Hmm? He would say the same thing. You mean tell me you were speaking up there like that against Moses? You wasn't afraid? You knew he was my man. But you wasn't afraid to put your mouth on him? Uh-oh. So when people start putting their mouth, come on, mouth on, mouth on. Because whatever judgment you judge is going to be what? Meet back to you again. I know four people that put their mouth on my, my life and my family, and they have lost their families. Elders and, and so-called prominent Internet teachers. Isn't that amazing? Utterly amazing. Well, God going to get you. I hope he does. He already got me. <laughs> See, we're not judging with the judgment of y'all. We're judging from our own book. We have to spend time on this. Because I'm telling the world, they jacked up. You can tell people don't believe his book. They don't, they don't read it. They don't live it. Read on. Yes, you have a very unique way of getting your message across. And yes, you can be loud and strange in your actions and comments. But... That is not sin, and therefore, you do not owe anyone an explanation. You are here to teach us, period, and I find no charge in what you have taught. Then what you go looking up all that stuff for then? I do have one concern. What is it? And that is your rebuttals. Rebuttals? Please do not take this advice as disrespectful, as we can all learn from each other. I suggest you do not engage these people by responding. Hold on. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm glad it's a suggestion because you don't correct an elder, especially being a woman. That's right. You don't correct an elder. Oh, see what I'm talking about? Is, it, is that right? That's right. Mm -mm -mm. That's why I keep telling you, see, what y'all women are doing, y'all seeing how women out there respond because that's the same way you'll talk to y'all. If I ever do what you call a rebuttal with someone, the Bible tells you to rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Isn't it right? And if they don't take that, I can turn them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh with the hope that their spirit may be saved in the day of the coming of Yah. Isn't it right? That's what they call rebuttal when you rebuke them. That's, that's throwing out a last line for the day. It's a mess. See, see what happens when I start talking? Everybody else, they go out there and talk. Now it's my turn. Hmm? Shall we begin? Amazing, isn't it? Read on. I know your first response being a military man is to fight back. No, my first response being a man is to fight back. I was fighting before I got in the military. Any man would, dang, a dog would even fight, by, fight man if you back him up in the corner. That's the first instinct of a man. And besides that, being a Hebrew, I'm already a warrior. I just can't fall off that trailer too good. <laughs> that thing jacked my elbow up, boy. Woo, I had to turn around and fight my left hand. <laughs> Come on. But we all have to continue growing spiritually, and these responses make you appear weak, though you are a very powerful man. Whoa. Have y'all seen anybody out there ever weak in my state? That's some, that's some tough talk, man. Let me teach all you women a good principle. It ain't even in the Bible, but I'm going to say it to you, and I know it's going to piss you off. You need to learn how to stay your tongue, woman. Shut up. That's safety. See, that... Mm, mm, mm. Our sisters will want to beat up women talking like that. I'm serious. Our sisters will be fuming. What? 
Man. And besides, if, if anything ever make me look weak, and when I'm weak, I'm strong. I'm at my strongest point anyway. Isn't that right? Read on. I would ask the tech team to assist you in removing all negative comments you and other members have posted. Move on in dignity. No, we're going to leave them there. I am. I'm, dignity. Dignity. First Peter 2.23. First Peter 2.23. Man. Now what they'll do, they'll say, see, he can't receive corrections. Uh, no, because a woman ain't going to correct me. Ain't no woman going to correct me. Mm, mm, mm. That's why I got all these men around me. Utterly amazing, isn't it? Don't they just make you cringe hearing this, though? It's like, who in the world or what? And that's why I'm not going to call a name, because if they ever get an opportunity to come down, if they even want to come now. Because, you know, this, this generation can't take rebuke and reproof. They can't. And if you can't take rebuke and reproof, they're showing that you're what? A bastard. Because that's correction, right? And we worrying about me if I'm doing something when we practicing bastardhood, bastardship, being bastards. Read on. Move on in dignity, 1 Peter 2.23, and focus on leading your flock. This experience has also strengthened my walk. Through it, Yeshua has shown me how to truly love my brethren. Hallelujah. Shalom and blessings. Well, I've been loving you the whole time. Utterly amazing, isn't it? Y'all see the reason why we need to go over this? Get a letter like that, a few letters. We need to go over this for the sake of all you hardheads out there. that think you know the will of Yah and you don't know it. Utterly amazing, isn't it? Utterly amazing. Y'all heard all that, right? And I, let me see, how many times I've done this before? If anybody got anything, see, I don't, how did I say I was going to say that, Sister Carol? You, you told me how to talk better. I said, I ain't got no enemies. But I'm their enemies. But I don't have any enemies. Y'all y'all hear me? I do not have one enemy in this world. Now, I'm their enemy. And I know the reason why I'm their enemy. Because I tell them the truth. And this, your mama and your daddy, your preachers, your teachers, ain't none of them did. Amazing, isn't it? See, the accusation is, is that I took somebody's wife. If I took somebody's wife, then damn, you ain't too much of a man then, are you? Isn't that amazing? See, you may not fear y'all. But I do fear y'all. I'm going to walk right, whether you like it, understand it, or not. So it's totally irrelevant to me what you think or believe. You know, man, you know I wouldn't get no sleep if I worried and care about what people say. Huh? How do you even preach the way I preach unless you only fear y'all? I mean, do I present myself like I fear man? And he ain't capacity at all. If I, if I got some punk in me, would y'all let me know? I mean, I need to know if I got some punk in me, man. If I got some punk or a little sweetness in me, you need to let me know now. I want to know. Don't let this spirit creep up on me. And one day I was something going to the pulpit and I'm... <laughs> y'all better tell me something, damn it. you grab a hold of me and tackle me and lay hands on me. Come out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Y'all better help save me. <laughs> uh, Y'all all right. Years ago, we used to call this preaching and teaching church etiquette. Because we don't know it. We don't know it. No, you ain't got to worry about passing out. I'm not going to do like these other Hebrew camps and go out and buy holes. I'm too tired for a hole anyway. That was supposed to be funny. Look at him looking. I ain't thinking about no. <laughs> I, you know what I really think it is? I really think that people today are so afraid that, that the elders and the preachers and the pastors are going to get away with something that they ain't going to get away with. 
I mean, really, because otherwise, why would you care? Y'all drew you to this. You know how difficult it is to get to hear me? You know how many times, even still to this day, somebody at the wit's end, they say, I got on my knees and prayed and said, y'all, just show me. Just show me a man of God. And then the first time he ended up showing her, all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of nowhere, uh, and then a little bitty YouTube thing, there's his me. me. Look at all stupid and stuff. It, it, it looks so, stu look so stupid, you can't even not click on it. You just, man, this guy, who is he? Click. And then all of a sudden, rah, rah, you run away. And you've been asking to show me the whole time. What you expect to see? A reed shaking in the wind? <laughs> what in the world, man? <laughs> I know it's hard to believe that there's at least one man of y'all on this earth. Now, there's more than that. There is more than that. But I, I, I'm sorry, I can't convince you. What a mess we in, ain't we? See what Christianity's done to us? Well, let's see. Let's see how much uh, <clears throat> dignity you've got now. You better believe it. Because I just got finished pushing and checking your character to the limit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our purpose is to correct and to restore Israel. Do we need it? And the Bible says don't be too sure of yourself lest you fall. So you need to be concerned about you Falling. Hallelujah. You got people out here, just, this is Carol's favorite saying. You got people out here that's done, done sins worse than Charles Manson. Charles Manson. And they're going to fancy themselves as your judges. Now my advice is, is that everybody in here and everybody out there that's listening, fear y'all. Did y'all hear what I said? He didn't say fear man bring up the snare. He said fear y'all. And keep his commandments. And this is the whole duty of man. You get that, you ain't got to worry about man. You're not, I should not fear what man should do to me. You get it? When you know that you're fearing y'all, you're keeping his commandments, to hell with people and their opinions. Paul even said, this is how arrogant Paul was. That's the way this generation would call him. Paul said, who are these people who seem to be somewhat? I don't even know who they are. Matter of fact, they added nothing to me. In other words, I'm ready to drop a bomb on you. Oh, y'all ready for this? If you ain't supporting me, that I know that you're praying for me, you're sending offerings to help this work stay afloat because the lights don't stay on because you're praying. Guess what? You ain't added nothing to me. Your opinion don't mean nothing to me. Isn't that amazing? All I did was just make the devil even more mad. No, just make him more mad. You ain't got to worry about me. Pastor Dollar ain't going to be going out living in a life of sin. Now you can take a deep breath. Blow out. And do it a whole bunch of times so you can hyperventilate. <laughs> Y'all all right? What you shaking your head, Sister Lisa? Lisa? <laughs> Y'all okay? Oh, you all right in here? Did y'all learn anything? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, this world's got, got, got everybody jacked up. To the utmost got jacked up. Let us stay in Israel. Hope y'all learned something. I tell you, it's amazing in that, Elder Donnie. Now, I want all y'all sisters, I, 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 y'all better not ever write any man like that. I've been I ever get no wind of any sister in this ministry writing somebody talking like that, especially some a man, especially an elder or a pastor. You stay in your place. Y'all hear me? Lord to the king. Y'all, we thank you for all things. We ask your blessings to be upon our ears and let these sins sink deep down in our hearts in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Bless y'all.